Ever wondered why sometimes things go wrong, even with a procedure as routine as a blood transfusion? Well, you're in the right place. Today, we're diving deep into the mysterious world of taco and trolley, two life-threatening complications that can occur post-transfusion. Stick around to uncover the latest research, potential therapies, and what the future holds for managing these critical conditions. Trust me, this is one episode you won't want to miss. Transfusion-Associated Circulatory Overload, or TACO, first noted in the 1930s. Most Frequent Pulmonary Complication of Transfusion. It is an independent risk factor for in-hospital morbidity and mortality. Estimated frequency varies as 1% in hemovigilance reports, up to 8% in postoperative elderly patients, and up to 11% in critically ill patients. Leading cause of transfusion-related fatalities according to the Serious Hazards of Transfusion, or the SHOT, report and the FDA. Transfusion-Related Acute Lung Injury, or trolley, first reported in 1951. Officially recognized as a separate disease entity in 1983. Occurs due to passive transfer of antileukocyte antibodies. Frequency estimated to be 0.08% to 15.1% per patient and 0.01% to 1.12% per product. Leading cause of transfusion-related fatalities for many years according to the FDA. Contrasts between the two. TACO is more frequent but trolley has been the leading cause of transfusion-related fatalities for many years. TACO is associated with circulatory overload, while trolley is associated with a hypersensitivity response. Survival rates for trolley are lower compared to acute lung injury control patients. Clinical presentation and diagnosis of TACO and trolley. TACO, acute respiratory distress within six hours of transfusion. Infiltrates on frontal chest radiograph. Evidence of positive fluid balance or cardiogenic involvement. Elevated blood pressure or tachycardia may be present. Diagnostic tools include hydrostatic pulmonary pressure, protein levels in edema fluid, and response to diuretics. BNP or N-terminal pro-BNP levels may be used for diagnosis but require caution. Cardiac ischemia must be excluded. Supportive features include distended neck veins, rails, and increased blood pressure. Fever may be present in one-third of cases. Trolley. Acute respiratory distress within six hours of transfusion. Infiltrates on frontal chest radiograph. Strictly non-cardiogenic, without evidence of left arterial hypertension. No temporal relationship to other risk factors for acute lung injury. Diagnostic tools are not as widely available. Supportive features include transient leukopenia, mild thrombocytopenia, and the presence of antibodies against recipient HLA or HNA antigens in the donor blood. Patients are frequently febrile. Differential diagnosis. TACO may include cardiogenic involvement, while trolley is strictly non-cardiogenic. TACO may respond to diuretics, while trolley does not. BNP or N-terminal pro-BNP levels may be elevated in both but require caution. Trolley patients may have transient leukopenia and mild thrombocytopenia, which are not typical for TACO. These are the major definitions for TACO and trolley. For a deeper understanding, feel free to pause the video and explore these key definitions. Pathophysiology of TACO and trolley. Two-hit model. First hit. Underlying, pre-existing clinical condition of the patient. Second hit. Transfused blood product. Both hits are required for the development of TACO or trolley. In TACO, first hit, poor adaptability for volume overload, congestive heart failure, cardiomegaly, pretransfusion diuretic use, elevated blood pressure, acute and chronic kidney disease, and advanced age. Second hit, suboptimal fluid management, inappropriate infusion practices, and rapid infusion rates. Other factors in the transfused blood product may contribute to inflammation, leading to TACO. In trolley, first hit, chronic alcohol abuse, shock, liver surgery, current smoking, higher peak airway pressure, positive intravascular fluid balance, low IL-10 levels, and systemic inflammation. Second hit, antileukocyte antibodies or other factors in the transfused product. In about 80% of cases, anti-HLA or anti-HNA antibodies are implicated. 
In the remaining 20%, non-antibody factors like lipid mediators, extracellular vesicles, and aged blood cells may contribute. Challenges and observations that we face. The degree of positive fluid balance is less associated with TACO development compared to circulatory overload in the absence of transfusion. CRP levels, an inflammatory biomarker, are elevated in trolley patients and may enable the first hit. The pathogenesis of both TACO and trolley are complex and not fully understood. However, understanding the two-hit model and identifying the risk factors can aid in diagnosis and management. The cytokine profiles in TACO and trolley. In TACO, IL-6, significantly elevated post-transfusion compared to controls. IL-8, not elevated pre- or post-transfusion. IL-10, increased both pre- and post-transfusion. GMCSF and TNFA, no changes observed pre- or post-transfusion. In trolley, IL-6, elevated both pre- and post-transfusion. IL-8, elevated both pre- and post-transfusion. IL-10, low levels observed pre- and post-transfusion, although one study found increased levels. GMCSF and TNFA, no changes observed pre- or post-transfusion. The diagnostic implications are, elevated Illinois 6 and IL-10 levels may suggest TACO. Elevated Illinois 6 and IL-8 levels with low IL-10 levels may suggest trolley. Pathophysiological mechanisms. TACO. Initially thought to be similar to congestive heart failure or pulmonary hydrostatic edema, but now considered more complex. First hit components. Cardiac failure, renal failure, and positive fluid balance. Second hits. Suboptimal fluid management or other transfusion product components. IL-10 levels increased in TACO patients, possibly mediated by factors in the transfused blood product. Occurrence of TACO decreased by about 50% with the introduction of universal leukoreduced products. IL-6 levels increased in TACO patients, and fever occurs in one-third of TACO patients. Lack of experimental animal models limits understanding of cellular involvement. Trolley. Most data derived from animal models or in vitro cultures of human lung endothelial cells. PMNs, neutrophils, are key pathogenic cells mediating lung damage. T regulatory cells and dendritic cells appear to be key protective cells. Monocytes, macrophages, and red blood cells also play a pathogenic role. Platelets have a controversial role. Some reports suggest a pathogenic role, while others argue against it. CD8 T lymphocytes and B lymphocytes do not appear to have a significant role. Mechanisms may depend on the type of antibodies, anti-HLA or anti-HNA, or biological response modifiers involved. Antibody-mediated trolley mechanisms. Pathway A. Anti-MHC class 1 antibody binds to pulmonary endothelium. Sequesters PMNs via their FCGRs, leading to PMN activation. Platelets may induce net formation, causing direct toxicity to pulmonary endothelium. Pathway B. Anti-MHC class 1 antibodies activate the complement cascade, producing C5A. C5A binds to C5A receptor on monocytes, macrophages. Induces production of reactive oxygen species, ROS, that damage pulmonary endothelium. Pathway C. CRP and anti-MHC class 1 antibody synergistically increase MIP2 levels and pulmonary PMN accumulation. CRP may directly target endothelium. Pathway D. Anti-HLAA2 antibodies activate PMNs and induce endothelial cell damage. Pathway E. Inflammatory priming induces MHC class 2 surface expression on PMNs. Anti-MHC class 2 antibodies directly target sequestered PMNs. Pathway F. Anti-HLA class 2 antibodies induce monocyte activation. Leads to PMN activation and damage to pulmonary endothelium. Pathway G. Anti-HNA 3A antibodies prime PMNs, leading to net formation. Pathway H. Anti-HNA 3A antibodies cause PMN priming and endothelial cell damage. Pathway I. Anti-HNA3A antibodies directly target lung endothelium cells, causing barrier dysfunction. Pathway J. Tregs and dendritic cells protect against trolley via upregulation of Illinois 10. Pathway K. 
Red blood cells may be pathogenic. Their depletion prevents onset of trolley. Pathway L. Gastrointestinal microbiota contribute to trolley development. Sterile housed mice are resistant to trolley, but susceptibility can be restored with fecal transplants. These pathways elucidate the complex mechanisms involved in antibody-mediated trolley, involving various cell types and signaling molecules. Further research is needed to understand the interplay between these pathways and how they contribute to the onset and progression of trolley. Non-antibody-mediated trolley mechanisms. Pathway M. Lipids from stored red blood cells activate pulmonary endothelium via BLT2 receptor and protein kinase C acid sphingomyelinase from aged platelets induces trolley in LPS-primed mice. Plasma and lipids from stored platelets enable trolley in LPS-primed rat model. Stored platelet-derived vascular endothelial growth factor increases lung vascular permeability. Pathway N. Lyso-PC from stored platelets causes pulmonary and systemic coagulopathy via PMN priming. Platelet and red blood cell microparticles prime PMNs and mediate trolley. Soluble CD40 ligand, SCD40L, accumulates in stored blood components and enables PMN-mediated endothelial cell damage. Subscribe now and hit the notification bell to stay updated on groundbreaking medical topics. Your engagement could be a lifesaver. Potential therapies and future directions for TACO and trolley. The management of TACO is, supportive measures include diuresis, oxygen, and intubation. Research needed to better understand pathophysiology. Investigate screening methods for occult cardiac insufficiency, e.g., echocardiography, and terminal pro-BNP. Study the effect of reducing rate and volume of transfusions in at-risk patients. The management of trolley is, supportive measures include oxygen, intubation, and fluid and pressor management. Trolley mitigation strategies have reduced incidence but not eliminated the problem. Potential therapies include IL-10 therapy, downregulation of CRP levels, targeting ROS, and blocking IL-8 receptors. IL-10 therapy shown to be effective in murine models but caution advised due to potential impairment of host resistance to infections. Limitations and challenges. Shortage of male AB plasma. No significant effect on 30-day trolley mortality with low-risk donor strategies. Inclusion of possible trolley cases in studies may obscure true decline in trolley cases. Overall, both TACO and trolley remain significant clinical challenges. While mitigation strategies have reduced the incidence of trolley, specific therapies are lacking for both conditions. Future research should focus on understanding the pathophysiological mechanisms, validating risk factors, and exploring potential therapies. The development of animal models for TACO is particularly important for understanding the disease pathology.